Welcome, welcome, welcome. We're back again. This time we're going to try and tackle some Wireshark. Uh, I've been having a lot of students that have been coming up to me and they're saying, I just don't get Wireshark. I don't understand it. It's too complicated. It's not doing what I want to do. I have quiz questions or exam questions that I don't understand how to get the information from. Uh, and understanding how to read a PCAP file is actually quite important, not just in academia, but also in your Trek careers, right? Your Trek careers. I can't talk today. Your tech careers, right? Uh, because it can help us with incident response. It can help us to understand how to uh, identify different aspects in our network infrastructure. And so I've gone ahead and I grabbed a bunch of information and I've uh, created our own PCAP file. I'm going to provide a link in the description below to access the same PCAP file that we're just going to call Practice One. Uh, and we're going to go through it. But before we go through it, let's set up Wireshark. You can see here that I'm in a Kali box. You don't have to use Kali. You can use Mac, you can use Windows. Uh, Wireshark is Wireshark is Wireshark. Uh, to find Wireshark, if you don't have it on your system already, it's quite simple. You're just literally going to open up your browser and then search for Wireshark. I almost did it on I'm on a host only machine, so I need to bring it over to my actual browser. Uh, let's start with that. I'm gonna go to Wireshark. I believe it's .org. There it is. And here you can download it. If I hit the download button, you can see that there's a Windows install, there's a Mac install, uh, and on Linux, it's already installed. If you're operating on a Kali Linux box, you don't even have to download it. It's already there. Uh, for Windows and Mac, you'll have to, to go through that, right? Uh, now, there's two main ways that we can open up Wireshark. The first way, uh, we just open up Terminal in our Kali box, and we literally just type in Wireshark and hit Enter, and it will open up Wireshark. Now, if you're doing this, be careful, as always, uh, if I close down this terminal, it will close my Wireshark as well. And we need to be aware of that. Uh, the other easier way to do it, since I'm providing you with a PCAP file, is we just open the folder where you downloaded it from. I believe I put mine in the download folder right there. And then you scroll down to PCAP1, double click it, and it will just open it up for you. That's the two best ways to open it. If you're on a Linux, excuse me, if you're on a Mac or a Windows, literally just double click on it. You can open up the program and you can go to town with it. Now, I'm gonna show this off a little bit more. Let me close that out. If I open up Wireshark for the first time, let's say that you want to grab traffic yourself. The original screen looks something like this. Now, I highly recommend that if you're doing it, you can just do off of any. You just double click the any button and it will start collecting traffic for you. Now, I'm on a host only system, which means I'm sandbox. There's no traffic going in, no traffic going out. Uh, I don't have an internet connection on this system. And I did that specifically so that I could literally show you everything without having to worry about security incidents on the system. And because it's a virtualized sandbox system, I don't have to worry about it. But if you're doing this on your home system, you will probably have a ton of traffic starting to come in. Uh, and I do mean a ton of traffic coming in. It's not uncommon to have a thousand lines of code or a thousand line of packets coming in literally within a minute's time. Okay, so be aware of that. Uh, let's jump back, back into this packet let me close this out so the first thing we want to do is we actually want to go in and make this easier to read i'm going to push those lines over a little bit and i do that just by scrolling over your look may be slightly different than mine based on a windows or mac but to be honest they're all uh, pretty much the same now i want uh from here i want to add some extra lines so i'm just going to right click right next to the info anywhere on this top bar really i'm going to right click and i'm going to do column preferences column preferences right there and I want to add two lines. So I'm going to hit the plus button twice right there. And I have these two new columns associated with it. If I click on that, it just highlights it. I'm going to double click on new column and I can name it. The first one I want to do is called source port, SRC port. And the second one I want to do is called destination port or DST port. This is just so that I can identify and knock out the ports on an easier way to read it. Uh, the next line over where it says number, again, I'm just going to double click. It's going to be a drop down bar. I'm going to take that drop down bar and I'm going to find source port uh, and I'm going to do resolve right here, source port resolve. And the one below it, I'm going to do destination. That one's up and then destination port resolved right there. I'm just going to press OK. And believe it or not, those are there. They're just all the way to the right hand side. So I'm going to grab those. I literally just left click and drag it. I'm going to drag my source port right next to my source address. And I'm going to do the same with my destination port and scroll over, grab that, and then move it right here. That makes my life a little bit easier when I'm trying to read through this. 
The next thing I want to do is I want to adjust my time. To do that, I'm going to do view. I'm going to do time display format, and I'm going to put mine right there with date and timestamp, just like that. I changed it from the perspective of the time coming in at a zero mark, meaning as soon as I started clicking packets, to an actual date time uh, algorithm. And you can play around with that and see what's best for you. Uh, when we go into the next video, I'm going to change it back. Uh, but this is what it is. Now, I like to also put a little bit of spaces in between just because my OCD comes into play. And I like to be able to actually see what I'm looking at. And having those spaces in between allow me to have a clear delimination between the two. So again, I'm going to put some spaces in between there just so I can read it uh, and make it a little bit easier just like that. All right. That's our setup. That's all we need to do for setup. I do want to show you some other features. You'll notice that I can click on any one of the bars and I can number it back. I can number it forward. I can go the same with time. I can do it with source. I can do it with the port number. I can do it with all that stuff, right? Let's say I'm going to take it back to the time and I'm going to bring it back to the occurring time and when it came in or the number, doesn't matter which. And let's say I want to go to the very last packet. On the top right hand side of your screen, you can see go to last packet. On a Mac and Linux, it looks slightly different, but it's basically in the same spot. I'm going to click that button and it's going to take me to the very last packet available on the system. Now, you'll notice that I have a lot of dot, dot, dots right there. I don't like that. I'm going to scroll that out a little bit. I want to be able to see all that. Uh, and that allows me to just have a little bit more idea of what my time looks like. Next thing I want to do is you'll notice there's no space right there. I'm going to right click on the number and I'm going to align that to the left just so I've got that little space. I know I'm nitpicky at this point, but it is what it is. Okay, so I want to go back to the very first. Now I can scroll all the way up and take time, or I can just hit that button right there that says go to first packet. And that'll take me right back to the first packet. I have a filter bar right here, and I can type in some cool things. Let's say that I wanted HTTP. I could type in HTTP, hit enter, and it's going to show me all the HTTP protocol. Uh, I could do some other cool things. I can do DNS, just like that, and it'll show me DNS. Since I'm on a host-only system, when I provide it, there's no DNS. If I delete everything and I hit enter again, it'll take me back to the full packet. This is the basics of Wireshark, of what we're doing today. Um, and that's going to be it, right? I, so I hope that was helpful. If you found it be helpful, uh, let me know. Uh, but we're here to learn. If you have a specific question about Wireshark, please throw it in the comments below. And I will see about making a video about it and see if we can't get that answer for you. We'll talk to you later. Until then, my name is Dr. K. Have a good one.